It's me putting even more hours into this radial trail. Okay, so I got the hand wheel off. There's a bad bearing. The weather is kind of blustery, so I'm leaving the cover on here. I've got a double nut here. I think you can see that. At a, that is a hook span style. And uh, it's not cooperating, so I'm going to heat that up. And I'll start the torch here. Probably peel a little paint. But you know, it is um, Massey Ferguson Gray. <laughs> and uh, Rust Oleum has this stuff even in spray can. So I don't care. I would rather spoil the paint a little bit. Then, um, there we go. Let me get it in there a little bit. It's kind of windy, so nothing's cooperating too good. But it, all I gotta do is get this hot enough to melt some beeswax in. And that'll help loosen it. <clears throat> this definitely has to come off. Okay, I'll heat it up and up and be back here. This is going to take a while. Okay. Um, the wind is kind of helping us a little bit. And I'm at a point here where I see the oil bubbling. And I can uh, start uh, touching the beeswax to it. You can see it starting to drip off there. And beeswax will follow heat. And it, it gets in uh, to places you would not believe. And it also kills green loctite. So if you can heat something up that has green loctite hot enough to melt beeswax in it, it'll come apart like there's no green loctite at all. Okay, I'm gonna reposition here. Hey, I hope you can see up in there. I managed to uh, drift it just a little bit and that's good it's just it went kind of hard on let's hold it with a punch and ended up drifting it with this there's no way to use the uh, hook spanner at this point I don't think I can try it and see if it'll come off I don't know if, it, if I can even get it on there. Get it up higher. Ah, not yet. Anyway, kind of hard to get it with that tool. Need more of a socket up here, but I don't think I have to build anything uh, uh, too fancy. Okay, I'm going to get the torch back on it and see if I can get some progress on that. Well, the wind's kind of cooperating. And uh, not too gusty, and this is heating up pretty good. I'll show you some. <laughs> you know, I uh, I saw I I didn't look at the video, but it was a milling machine, and uh, had the, the little headline going. Uh, it I have 200 hours into this milling machine. Is it worth it, or something like that? And. You know, the truth is that uh, a milling machine, I, I have more than 200 hours in that brown and sharp. It was rusted up with this uh, Morris Moore speed. And I've got, I bet, 300 hours so far in this drill. It's like I'm in over my head. And <laughs> I, uh, I got this hard edge chucker here for sale 
and a guy called me and offered to trade me a size bigger than a drill, a radial drill than this for that chucker. And it's running. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And it looked like it's in good shape too. 11 inch column, three foot arm, same length arm, but this is a nine inch column on this. And I think Fosdick or someone made a seven inch as the smallest of, I guess you could say this style of, uh, of a uh, radial drill. Now, this radial drill is an older one, but there's always advantages to things there's, uh, if you change something. Like the more modern uh, radial drills don't have the motor sticking way out the back like that. But uh, one of the things about the design like that is uh, it's more balanced on the, uh, on the column and the machine tends to uh, be more stable and true. And I did a sweep across this table that shocked me. It was well within uh, one thousandths. I, I was really quite shocked about that. All right. Now this machine uh, was out at the, in the Hanford uh, nuclear uh, Plutonium production, likely during the uh, Manhattan Project, because this is like a 1940s machine with that early style, uh, really cool electric motor there. Really nice. I love that style electric motor. Okay, I'm going to reposition and see if I can knock that loose a little better. Okay, that was the trick. I got it hot, moved it a little bit, and then reheated it, got more beeswax in it, and uh, now it'll come loose. I, I, I just touched it with a punch and it moved. Let's see if we can get that to come off. See, look at that, it came right off. Or it will. Let me get that nut off. Somebody a skilled workman more than 80 years ago put this nut on and adjusted it. Isn't that amazing? Okay, now we got this one. And I'm just gonna see if I can, uh, let's see where they go. See if I can get this loose now. Looks like it did. Yeah, that's gonna come off too. Okay, that's hot. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Now this... I'm not exactly sure how to totally remove this whole thing. And I'm hoping I don't have to, but I might. So we won't know that until we... Fully get it inside. I didn't lose it. Okay. You know something? That's a, all of a sudden smooth. Okay, I'll determine what's going on here if this bearing's any good at all. But it could, it almost feel like that bearing's was way too loaded with uh, these uh, collars here. Two of those. Okay, we'll be back here. I have to tell you, you know this stuff right here? I think this stuff is shit. Just total shit. Look at this can. What's, uh, what, what's with this thing? I hardly ever buy this garbage, and I guarantee you, I will never buy this ever again. Something like CRC spray oil, or uh, 
I don't know, that blast or something, spray oil. Never again will I buy that crap. I don't use it on aluminum. I don't use it for tapping. I just had one use I wanted to use it on and it didn't work that well. And look at it now. Waste of money. Total waste of money, that garbage. If you like it, then bathe in it. I don't like it. Okay, I got good news here. I was going to spray some of that up in there. It probably would have ruined it. Um, this is smooth without a load on it. So I don't need to replace this bearing. Pull all this stuff apart. It's just fine. I don't know why this was too tight. Maybe it's always been too tight. So all I got to do is make a gasket for this and uh, replace that seal and put it back together and it's fine so another thing done and another day on the uh, Morris more speed drill press here <laughs> you know this thing's going to be a lot of fun so I knocked over that can that's some CRC uh, brake clean. That stuff's okay. Man, can you believe that crap can? Who come up with that? I think I can uh, discharge that on a rag and rub something down with it. You know, it's not a total waste, but I tell you what, that's pretty irritating. <laughs> what, what kind of a what kind of a nozzle can is that thing anyway, huh? Okay, I'll put that behind me and uh, move forward. <laughs> I, I wouldn't do very good advertising uh, current stuff because I don't think much of it's any good at all. Of course, the stuff that stare at makes and good companies like Royal and some of these others, Noga makes good stuff. There's good stuff out there. But there's bad stuff out there too, stuff that doesn't work. Now, I think this more, more speed will work. Now, one of the things that's interesting about radial drills, years ago, back in, uh, back in the day in an earlier industry, you know, for example, uh, the American Hole Wizard radial drill was used to punch all the holes bore also line bore were done with American radial drills the headstock on your American lathe was done with American hole wizards and uh, a lot of people don't know that the radial drills are some of the largest uh, machines ever made uh, there was a company out here, uh, George Washington Machinery. It had one so big, it was taken apart, and I couldn't recognize what it is. It also had a headstock for a Bensonberry lathe I thought was a boxcar. <laughs> so they made some big stuff at one time. And this here is considered a small radial. Well, made about 1940, 1941, 42 war machine they put the, this identical drill to the one on the battleship New Jersey and it's got some special features and uh, I can I can show you some things to get the cover off uh, later but the Sun is going down <laughs> I don't know where Chloe is she's somewhere I just fed her she's probably taking it out okay maybe I'll sign off inside I'll clean up my mess out here Okay, at the end of another pretty good day. Had a little bit of odd weather. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be a little bit better and I can get inside the uh, the, the drilling head of that uh, Morris Morris Speed. And uh, I'd like to get that spindle adjusted and uh, um, get that buttoned up, get oil in it, get that electrical going as soon as possible, and uh, start it up and run it. So, 
that's kind of what's happening there. Now, a lot of people have mentioned about the uh, noise of the machines and me talking. There's not a lot I can do about that with the equipment I have. I have a uh, single GoPro camera that is still going courtesy of Warren Jones, uh, a pair of uh, spare batteries for it. And uh, I can keep going as long as that lasts. But uh, if, if you would like microphones and stuff like that, that's going to require a, a equipment for that. And realize I get no income off this channel whatsoever. I don't sell stuff. What can I sell? I use this old stuff, you know. So uh, what you can do is uh, send a donation here.